Hi, this is Mike again, your Visual Basic professor. Today I want to talk about some coding examples where we actually get into writing code and seeing it work. This particular example, when I made this video, is under Chapter 3, Code Examples. So I'm going to right click on the flooring project, which is compressed, and say Save Link As. And I don't want to save it here. I'm going to go up to the desktop, and I have a folder 1331. And you see I put all my Chapter 1 stuff in a folder, all my Chapter 2 stuff in a folder. So let's create a new folder called Chapter 3. Go into there and hit Save. Now once that's downloaded, I'll minimize my uh, web browser. Here's my 1331 folder. Open it up. Chapter 3. There's flooring. And if you remember, any of these examples, you have to uncompress them. So I'll say Extract All and say extract and once that's extracted you'll see we have the compressed folder with a little zipper or I can even make it the uh, medium icons or the large icons with the zipper we don't need that anymore because we've uncompressed it into this folder so I'm going to delete flooring.zip and go into flooring and launch the project now you may get this message uh, if you're running from a network drive it's really okay you can just tell it to continue so once I'm in the project I don't see my form remember we have to double click on the form form one over here in the solution explorer to see my form so you see on this one I've got a series of labels a series of text boxes and some labels to show the answers and two buttons. Let's watch the program run. So I'm going to come up here to the start. And in this program I can put in the length of a room 10 feet, the width 15, the cost $5.95 a square foot and say calculate. It tells me there is 150 square feet in this room. The cost of the flooring is going to be 800 and ninety two dollars and fifty cents and my grand total is eight hundred and ninety two dollars and fifty cents now I can also add a second room say I'm just doing a very small room like a like a powder bathroom but it's gonna have more expensive flooring calculate that's only 25 square feet two hundred and forty nine dollars but you see it's it's keeping a running total in my grand total label right here now I'm gonna hit exit Let's review a couple things on our user interface from a uh, previous material that's covered. Remember, you want when you're running your program, you want it to be able to go through with the tab key on the keyboard, left to right, top to bottom. Let me run the program once more. This time I'll use the F5 function key to launch the program. If I hit the tab key, it's moving down, left to right, and then it's going to come back around the corner. So I've got my tab order correct. I'm going to exit the program and to see that click on the form and say view tab order so you can see my length label is tab order 0 tab index 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 these really don't matter because your focus of the keyboard can't go to labels okay these this label up here matters because it needs to be the tab index just before the text box so if the user uses the shortcut key it will go to that text box now if I need to reset my uh, tab order I just start clicking until I get it the way I want it to be top to bottom left to right I can do these if I want to now in this case I'm just putting the same order back right and then I can go view tab order to turn it off now if you're clicked on a control and you go to view tab order will very often be grayed out let me see if I can make it gray out on us nope there it is it's keeping it active in Visual Studio 2010 uh, 2013 it didn't used to do that in 2010 so I'm going to turn it back off now we've seen the program run I want to look at the code before I go into the code, let's think about what's happening. I'm inputting three values, and I'm outputting three values. When you type something into a text box, it is a string. Strings are 
ASCII letters and numbers. Each ASCII character in a text box or string just has an ASCII code, like a capital A is a 65, a capital B is a 66. Every single keystroke on the keyboard has an, has an ASCII code. Now, CPUs can't do math with strings of data. So what we're going to have to do in our program is input the data as strings, convert it into numbers. We're going to use decimals. So it can be fractions. It can be, you know, $2.95, not $2 or $3. We don't want to use integers because they can't have fractions. Then we're going to do the math in this number format, this decimal format that the CPU can do math with. And then to put it back into the labels, we have to turn it back into strings. So I'm going to double click on the calculate button so we can see what's going on. So here's my code window. Here is my private sub button calculate click. So this is what the user clicks on. This is the code that runs when the user clicks on the calculate button. Now, the first thing you'll see inside the sub is I have six dim statements. So when we're taking a value from the text box and bringing it into random access memory to turn it from a string into a decimal we have to tell Visual Basic the names of those memory locations in RAM so the user is going to be typing in three things the length the width and the cost per square foot if I go back to the calculate button you will see I dimmed decimal length as decimal, decimal width as decimal, and decimal cost. Oh, not cost. Yes, decimal cost as decimal. So that's my three inputs. This is what I'm going to be taking what the user typed in the text box, turning it into decimals so I can do math with it. Now my outputs are going to be the total square feet and the cost for that room. Now I've got one other output which is going to be the grand total which I'm going to talk about in another video when we talk about how we do running totals. So the first thing you got to think of when you're working with the program is input, process, output. What are my inputs? What kind of math do I need to do? What kind of processing do I need to do? And what are my outputs? Okay. So, once again, if I go back to my form designer, I can see I have three inputs. And right now we're just going to concentrate on the square feet and the total cost. I have those two outputs. Got the grand total. Going to cover that in another video. So, I've got three inputs here I'm looking at and two outputs. So, what that tells me is I need to dim those five variables to hold those items. Actually, it's six, uh, it's five variables here, you see. I've got the three input and I've got the two output. Now, these are going to be decimal. They're going to hold dollars and cents, fractions. So that's why I want to say dim, which means dimension, which tells Visual Basic set aside some RAM to hold a decimal. I'm going to name it des len len for length I'm abbreviating I could have named it I could have used the full word uh, here I said des wit which stands for width and then I have desk cost now the reason I start all my variables with the three letter prefix for DEC is so when I'm down here in my code and I don't see my dim statements I I know that's a decimal variable okay because I named it DEC for the first three letters in real programs they're not you know 15 lines of code there are hundreds of lines of code in real programs it's not five variables I'm I'm creating in RAM it's 50 or 100 so it's very important to give your variables good names so that when you're down in your code looking at it you can tell what that variable is without having to scroll up to the top and find out now the other thing I do when I dim my variables is I put a little single quote here and I write a description of the variable. Okay? That is documentation to myself as a programmer 
and to other programmers. Because if you've got 50 or 75 or 100 variables, you are not going to remember them all unless you scribble yourself some notes. So that's, that's what this is right here. I'm scribbling myself a note. Okay, so now let's think about the inputs, the processing, and the outputs. And I'm going to bring up a low-tech picture to show you. So I just jumped over to my professor notes that I provide to my students at the top of each section, top of each chapter. And I have a little crude diagram I created that shows what's going on in flooring. My inputs are length, width, and cost per square foot. My processing is length times width gives me square feet. And the cost for that room is square feet times cost per square foot. What are my outputs? Total square feet, total cost. So if you think about your programs in terms of inputs, processing, and outputs, that helps you know what variables you need to dim inside your calculate button. So this is going to be my inputs from my text boxes. So if you've got three text boxes, you're going to need three variables. Okay, I'm calculating some numbers. I'm going to have to put those answers into variables, so I'm going to have to dim a variable to hold the square feet and a variable to hold the total cost. Then I'm going to take those two variables and I'm going to put them into the labels. Okay, So that's what we have to do. Let me jump back to the program now. I'm going to pause my video long enough for me to magically switch back. So now you can see that I have my three inputs and I have my two outputs I want to talk about. So how do we take it from the text box and turn it into a number? Well first of all we got to know the name of the text box. So my length text box is called TXT length, L-E-N. How do I know that? Let's go back to my form window, click on that text box. Over here on the property windows, I'll scroll up, and you can see its name property is TXT length, TXT standing for text box. If I click on width, I named this one TXT WID for width, and if I click on the third one, I named it TXT cost. I could have named these anything I want, and what you see in a lot of Visual Basic books is instead of calling it TXT cost, they call it cost text box. So that's fine whichever way you name it. It just needs to have a meaningful name for your control. Also remember, these are controls. This has a text property. This has a back style property. This has a border style property. It has all these properties. It's a control. Okay, We're interested in the dot .text property of the text box. Labels are controls. They have properties. Back color, auto size, border style, dot .text for what's in it. When I go look at something that's dimmed, des length is just a location in RAM. It is not a control. It does not have properties. Des length does not have dot .text doesn't have any properties. It's just a location in memory to hold a decimal variable, a decimal value, and that's it. And I gave it a name so I could refer to it in code. So let's see how this program works. I'm going to take what's in the text box, the dot text property, I'm going to parse it into a decimal. So we're going to use the method decimal.parse that's going to take this string, turn it into a decimal so I can do math with it, and put it into des length. So then I'm going to do the same thing with width and cost. Now I'm going to show you a feature of Visual Studio that is very powerful. I'm going to click over in this gray border once, and you see a red circle showed up, and now there's a red line through that line of code. That is a breakpoint. If I go to run my program, it's going to pause when it hits this line of code so I can see what's going on. So we're going to debug this program. Let me start it. Program pops up. Let's do what we did before. $10, I mean 10 feet for the length, 15 feet for the width, and $4.95 for the square footage. That's reasonable. I'll hit calculate. So now my calculate procedure, my calculate sub is run all the way to this point. Now it's paused my program. If I hold my mouse over dot text, it says there's, there is a 10 in it. You see double quote, one zero, double quote. 
So that tells me that dot text is a string because anything that's a string is going to be surrounded by double quotes. Okay. Now if I look at desk length, hey, it has a zero in it and it has a D on it, D for decimal. Okay. That's that's Visual Basic saying this is a decimal variable with a value of zero. Now why does it have a zero and not a ten? Because we're doing decimal parse. Well, I haven't run this line of code yet. I'm paused before this line of code ran. So if I go up to the debug menu, I can hit F10, function key F10, to step over that line of code. So now you see the yellow marker is on the next line, and I get my cute little arrow saying this is my current statement. So now if I look at desk length, you see it has a value of 10, because the decimal pars turn the string into a decimal. So I'm going to hit the F10 key twice more. I could go to debug menu, uh, F10, debug menu, F10. And now you see I've got a 10 for length, I've got a 15 for width, and I've got $4.95 for my cost. So this line of code right here is going to say, let's get the square feet of the room. 10 feet times 15, that's going to be what? That's going to be, well, let's run that line of code. I'll use the shortcut key. So there it is, 150. Okay. Now, what's the cost per square foot? It's going to be 150 square feet times $4.95. I'll run that line of code, F10. Now you see $742 is the total cost for that room. Then I'm going to take the total cost, add it to the grand total. Okay, And I'll talk about that in a different video. Now, we've done the calculations. The answers are in desk square feet and desk total. But these are decimal variables that are running in RAM. The last thing I have to do is put the answers back on the screen for the user. So I've got to put that back into the text property of label square feet. And I've got to put the total cost for that room in label total. So to do that, up here I said decimal.pars. That means turn a string into a number. To go back the other way, I've got to take decimal square feet and use the toString method to turn it back into a string to put it into the text box. So I'm going to run this line of code. Remember you can use the shortcut key F10 or, and, or, or you can go up to the menu. It ran that line of code. So now you see the label has quote 150 in it. It turned it back into a string. Here we have the decimal 150. Here we have the string 150. So at this point I'm going to go ahead and tell my program just to continue running. And now you'll see I have my answers out here. So anytime you need to run your program to see if it's working correctly, you can click into your code window. And uh, remember, if you don't remember how to do that, you double click on the button. You can click in the margin here to turn on a breakpoint where you want to pause it. If you click it again, it turns it off. So there's my breakpoint. I turned it off. If I want my breakpoint to be down here, I just click right there. Okay? And that's going to let me debug my program. So, what we have to learn here in review is everything you want to do math with, you're going to have to do a decimal parse. And you're going to have to dim a decimal variable to hold it. Okay? So, how do you decide how many variables? Well, you can look at the clues in your in your user interface. I have three inputs. I'm going to need to dim three variables to hold those three. I have three answers. I'm going to have to dim three variables to hold those three answers. Okay. Once again, if I look at my code window, here you see five variables are dimmed. My sixth variable to hold the grand total is actually up here, and that's going to be a later video. Don't you love it? It's like a teaser. It's like you know, you're watching Lord of the Rings and they only come out with one a year. So, good news is you're not going to have to wait a year for the sequel. Okay, that's going to be another video posted right under this chapter. So, let me stop this video so I can get it up onto YouTube.